Hi guys, Jason with here, down at Bro Golf Wings in Suffolk, and today I have got the Callaway Rogue Irons. Now, there's a family of Rogue Irons to be released. Um, I've got the Standard, I have the Pro, and I've got the X. The X is an interesting one, we'll get to that one later. This is just gonna be for the Standard video for the Standard Rogue Iron. Now, okay, when it comes, this is six iron. So when it comes to the loft, it is 26 degrees, so it's getting a fraction stronger than I would say normal because nowadays what is the loft of a six iron um, when it comes to the technology in the head though Callaway have gone mental when it comes to the technology in this head um, how they've designed this now I've been looking at all the media bits and pieces when it comes to the design of this club and the level of research and development they've got into an iron is mental 360 cup face which means basically what they've got this head when they design and make this head they make it in two parts they make the body with the a hosel and basic body of the club and then the face so when they're making the face independently they can obviously design the 360 cup face they can also put the vft the variable face thickness so when they're designing this they necessarily through um player tests and etc they've realized that when you miss the middle generally people miss low and healy and low and toey and around that area um, so they're obviously making this golf club as forgiving as possible when it comes to those kind of ideas with a variable face thickness now the interesting bit for the techie guys this is kind of a hollow head um, but when you make a hollow head and the 360 cup face which Callaway is saying is their most springy one yet and right to the legal limit of 0.83 bounciness, coefficient of restitution, trampoline effect. Um, it makes a very interesting, not very nice noise. Uh, <laughs> now, for me, as I just sort of drop another person's or manufacturer's uh, name on this one, the club, the Ping G, the Max, that one that went, the one with the little cone on this, it made like a hybrid noise. Now, to me, I hated that noise. Other people liked it, I hated it. Now, the problem is we're making a face very thin, making it very explosive, is it makes a somewhat seems an unpleasant noise where more forgings are a softer noise which people like more desirable noise um, so you have to fill it with something so in comes urethane in comes foam in come all the ideas that you can put into a hollow head design to make it feel nicer even though it's explosive um, the problem with that happens as soon as you stick anything inside that if it's a solid or a liquid and it fills the cavity as soon as you hit the ball hits the face the face wants to flex but it, it can't go anywhere because obviously there's stuff in the void to try and to dampen the noise so what can I have done research and development guys have gone crazy um, they've got the urethane um, which is softer than what you find on like, one of their chrome soft balls um, but they've filled it with tiny tiny like air pockets micro bore holes now it's <laughs> okay the cost of developing these things might be crazy um, but it allows them to be able to obviously hit the golf ball face spring and the urethane to give so you get the springy face but then you don't get the horrendously hybrid noise cracking good idea does it work we'll see um, right also for this we've got the little tungsten. and if you look at the back of the sole now it's a, a medium thick sole design it's not massive it's not super chunky if you want super chunky you'll go into the rogue x we'll go into that one later on um, but they've got this uh, tungsten little milled tungsten in there which they're just saying they can design it that they can obviously pull cg far back and make it more forgiving now i'm not a great fan of adding tungsten to clubs other manufacturers have done it and i feel in those it spoiled the feel of it slightly but that's only my opinion it'd be interesting to see if by putting a six iron at 26 degrees whether they can still keep the launch now they're saying they have now we're going to be hitting range balls initially. This is just to give you an idea of the sound, the feel, the flight of what I'm, what I'm seeing, what I'm expecting to see. Um, and then we'll go into necessary how it performs with a premium ball. So how you guys are going to be hitting this 
hopefully out on the course. Will this club suit you? Will this be the club that you want to be putting in your bag? Remember this one, it replaces the steel head, I believe, the steel head XR. So that'd be an interesting, right. Little bit of offset, nothing too ugly when it comes to that. And it's got a medium to thick top line, although not super thick. We'll get into the Rogue X later. Um, let's just hit, one, it's hit this one, sorry, and let's see if we can um, feel what they've done with the face. Oh, I'll tell you what, on, I won't have that one back. Uh, 125 ball speed, 13.4 launch, range ball, it will launch yeah, said it before. Um, six and a half spin. Hmm, okay. 6,500 spin um, and going up at 28.1 peak height. That was decent off peak up there, it's rangeable. Um, 175 and bang on, yeah. Um, 175 is a long way for a rangeable. Hmm. Although, sound wise, feel wise, strike wise, it was higher pitch than what I'm used to. Bearing in mind, guys, I'm playing forged clubs, so I'm, I'm expecting the, yeah. But actually, it wasn't bad. Be interesting to see if I can catch this one a little bit low heely or low toey to see if that extra forgiveness they said with designing 360 cut piece to see if it's made a difference or not. I, yeah, I quite like it. Gone a little bit right, one, two, two, 12 degrees launch, a uh, little baby fade on that one, six, two, uh, caught it fractionally low on the face, I think, and then one, seven, one, two point, I mean, it was okay, it was at target, didn't quite go so far, but I, I, was, I didn't strike it perfectly. I actually quite like it. I don't really like game improvement clubs normally. But one of the things is that the blade length isn't too big. So I'm not a great fan of having clubs which got massive blade lengths. It, it feels like I'm swinging a bucket on a broomstick. Um, now, these are, with the family of rogue irons, we'll go into this one as we go into the other ones, but um, they're trying to, this is fractionally longer, a lot longer shafted than I'm used to. If you guys, you wanna know what I've got in here, I've got an XP95 R300, they're standard stock shaft. You guys that subscribe to me for a while, no, I'm not, um, shaft sensitive so it doesn't make no difference but um let's go here another one. two more go and then we'll hit some real ones i'll tell you what that's not bad it's not bad at all uh, b -b 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 one two three ball speed 14 two launch tiny out to the right six one spin one seven three five three see six one i'm starting to get a bit worried for me now, they're going well, they're going very well, and actually I quite like the feel. So Callaway, well done, you actually have made a game improvement iron which feels half decent. Um, but I'm starting to get a bit worried about the spin, for me. Now bear in mind, I, I'm not a massive spin player. So um, I am a bit sensitive when it comes to if clubs start spinning a bit too low. I start getting the wrong flight. Last one, and we'll go hit some real ones. Yeah, I quite like that. Quite like that a lot, actually. One, two, four, ball speed, 13 launch. I mean, it's consistent. Uh, six, three spin, 173, one right. I like this. I do like it. My only issue would be what it's going to be like when we get to a gaming situation. I'm going to go hit some now um, with my gaming ball Vice Pro on GC2 HMT to see how a premium ball works with this one rather than just the range balls because at the moment I actually encourage and how is I'm encouraged how it feels. It, it, it feels lovely. Um, I won't know until we get some real balls. So let's go hit some real balls and find out. Okay, now I've hit a bunch of shots using my Game Ball Vice Pro with the Callaway Rogue standard iron. And um, interesting data. Now it's 26 degrees, it's a standard rogue iron. So it is strong, but it's not mega strong. If you want mega strong, wait for the Rogue X review. That'll be coming soon. Um, now I've hit a bunch of shots anyway. 
Now, I've got one of them greyed out. The reason why I've got them greyed out is because if you look on the club data, I've got all the information on club data there, but for some reason GC2 HMT, the HMT part, didn't quite catch all the information on there. So rather than including that in the HMT part of the data, I've greyed it out. If we just enable it for the moment, so we can actually see what happens when it comes to the GC2, that's actually the proper just ball data. Um, average ball speed of 128, quite healthy shall we say. Um, average launch of 15.1. So even though it's 26 degrees, it's still launching actually quite well. Um, it's not kind of launching the same as what I normally launch my six iron, but bear in mind my six iron is like five degrees or so weaker than the Rogue standard. So you can see. But even though it's five degrees weaker, you can see it's launching at 15.1 and that's all that tungsten, all that CG right down low, keeping that ball launching up in the air. Um, tiny little draw off a target, but not bad at all really, on average. Four, four, six, seven, so four and a half thousand spin. That is my only issue because it's not spinning a lot. Now, I am a mid profile spin player, so I'm not necessarily low, low spin, but I'm not high spin. Um, and the problem with this is if I was just to take this as a, as a six iron. So if this was going six iron distance, standard six iron distance, um, and it was spinning at four and a half thousand RPM, peaking height at nearly 32, um, going down at 44 degrees and 191, well, not the 199, um, normal six iron distance, I'd say, okay, you've nearly got 45 degrees descent angle, which is six iron, which is kind of where you'd want to be. Yeah, to give you some kind of idea of control when it comes to the green. The problem is it's spinning at 4,500 RPM, so there's not a lot of real spin on it. So you're gonna get a little bit of descent angle, but not a lot of spin is to have a tendency to roll on. So lose a little bit of control when it hits the green. But it's not going to stand a six iron distance. It's going 191 yards carry. Now, okay, it is 27 or 26 degrees. So it is stronger, but 191 and an average of 4.3 yards left. But you can see there with my all my strikes, all my hits, left them all in there. Um, some good, some meh, but I'm not a robot, I am human. So I've added them in there. Um, what I will do, I will just pop over to the club data, but I've disabled that top one because obviously when it comes to the club data, um, if I don't disable it, it'll mess up the numbers. Average uh, club head speed, 96 miles an hour. Um, attack angle down four degrees, 4.6 degrees. I am, this is the interesting bit. I, my club path is coming on average 1.6 from the inside. My face is actually closed to path by four degrees. So this should start left, go left on a, on a normal fit. But these clubs that I've got are straight from Callaway. They're straight from Callaway's um, demonstration media site. Um, so they're not custom fit for me. The problem with that is that obviously I am an upright player when it comes to my lie angles and depending on what my manufacturer and what their standards are for lie angle and length, etc., it can have a differing amount of whether I need however many degrees upright. So these are standards. You can see my lie angle there is four degrees down. So instantly they don't necessarily fit in that sense. So the loft is pointing right. So even though I should be like really going left with these, I'm only averaged, uh, what was the, the flight on there? 4.4 uh, left. Um, so you can see when you guys get custom fit, how much difference just where the loft is pointing because of lie can make a difference on where the shots are going. But um, I'm actually quite impressed. I mean, looking at the average strike, five mil toe, zero mil low. And if I go over to all the strikes, you can then see there that my grouping, when it comes to uh, the, the standard rogue iron, it's, it's not that bad at all. Um, it does wander. And I, I struggle when it comes to bigger heads. That's the only thing. Because it's a bigger head, I struggle with focusing my, my mind to hit it beg, uh, bang on middle. When I've got a small blade, when I've got a tiny little thing like Callaway's Apex MV, that's such a tiny blade length, it focuses my mind on absolute purity of strike. Um, when I've got a bigger club, it's not like a, a battering ram, if you want a battering ram, we'll see the Rogue X video later on. Um, but I do get a little bit lax, and that's being honest. Um, I, I, I don't concentrate probably as much as I should do because it's a bigger club head, it's more forgiving, and you can kind of hit it nearly anywhere on the face and it will still perform quite well. Um, but yeah, I'm quite impressed with the club. The, I'm, I'm very impressed with the sound it makes because of the aggressive design 
and explosive of that. You can really feel the, the, the well, I say feel, but you, you get that perception of the ball just firing off the face. Um, but you don't get that same crack that you'd normally get from a proper game improvement iron. You do actually get some feel from it. So from the research and development side of things, it's worked well. Um, could I use them? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I could probably, I don't know, it's just too big for me personally, but if you're in the market for a game improvement iron um, that you want to go a certain distance, you want the potential to hit obviously more distance, more height, um, high spin players, another option to go to because obviously this generates fractionally lower spins because of obviously the design of the heads, etc. But it's a very, very well performing club. Um, 191 yards carry from six iron is um, up to 197 when I absolutely rip it. But that's not bad, down to 189, 187, 186. So 186 to 197, 11 yards in it. That's not bad whatsoever. Anyway, if you like the video, click the like button below. If you didn't like it for any reason, don't just dislike. Put a comment below as to why you didn't like the video and how I could change the videos around, the content around, so you would. And comment below anyway with whatever you'd like. And um, by the side of me, I'll stick it over here somewhere. Um, that's the subscribe button. If you could subscribe, that allows me to do more of this content. It allows me to give my own ideas um, and uh, thoughts on how it performs, how it feels, what kind of market it would suit. Um, as if you're in the market for a game uh, improvement iron, then this definitely one's one to try. Um, give it a go. So I hope you liked it and we'll see you again soon.